in this video i'm going to demonstrate how make or buy decision is arrived at and the relevant costing let's go through this question Aboya Company Limited is a private company incorporated in Ghana. The company manufactures Aboya tricycles that are gradually becoming a major means of inner city transportation in most Ghanaian communities. Demand for these tricycles is currently on the high. The company's cost accountant has provided the following per unit cost information relating to the production of Aboya tricycles internally. We have direct materials, we also have direct labor, variable overheads supervisor salaries, depreciation of specialized equipment, and allocated general overheads. An external supplier has offered to supply to the company Abubuya Tricycles at a price of 18,000 Ghana cities per unit. Abubuya Limited has two supervisors. The first supervisor supervises the entire operations of the company while the second supervisor has been specifically engaged to ensure that each Aboboya produced internally meets the standard requirements set out by the Ghana Transport Authority. The first supervisor is a permanent employee and thus receives a fixed salary of 2,000 Ghana cities, while the second supervisor is paid 1,000 Ghana cities per unit of an internally produced Abubuya supervised. The specialized equipment is used for the design of the tires of the Abubuya tricycles. If the company decides to stop producing the Abubuya in-house, it can sell the specialized equipment at a price of 4,000 Ghana cities. Required, as a management accountant, advise the company on whether to continue to manufacture the tricycles in-house or buy them from the external supplier. What are the qualitative factors the company should consider in arriving at the decision to make or buy? Alright, so in make or buy decisions, we basically compare the relevant cost okay so we compare the relevant cost that will be incurred in a decision to make or the relevant cost to be incurred in a decision to buy the product so we create columns for the two products um, we create column for make or buy so we have make we also have buy You know, relevant costs are costs that vary between two alternatives. Relevant costs, in essence, are costs that can be avoided if a particular decision is not taken. Okay? Relevant costs are costs that can be avoided. So, they are avoidable costs that will not be incurred or whose incurrence is dependent on undertaking a particular venture or choosing a particular alternative. So we we'll go through the question and identify the costs that are avoidable and those that are not avoidable. We have direct materials. Direct materials are avoidable first cost because if you don't produce any abobo yeah, you are not going to incur any expenditure on material so this is an avoidable cost then we have direct labor direct labor is also in direct proportion to the production of aboboya in-house and so that one is also avoidable then you also have variable overheads the fact that they are variable means they vary in direct proportion to output and so they are variable cost then we have supervisor salaries the question says that these salaries, these salaries are made up of the salaries of two supervisors that are in Aboboya Company Limited. One of them is a permanent employee. For the permanent employee, he earns a fixed salary of 2,000 Ghana cities. This means that even if they don't produce anything at all, 
this permanent employee is going to be entitled to 2,000 Ghana cities in terms of salary. But then the second supervisor who earns an amount of 1,000 Ghana cities is paid on the basis of each Aboboya supervised. Okay, so the production of Aboboya in house that he supervises, he is paid on that basis. So if he supervises two Aboboyas, it means he's going to be paid 2,000. It means that if Aboboya Limited decides not to produce any Aboboya, it is not going to incur this expenditure on the second supervisor. So it means the salary of the second supervisor is avoidable. So it is avoidable for the second supervisor's salary. But for the first supervisor, since he is a permanent employee, his expenditure or his salary is fixed. Then we also have depreciation of specialized equipment. Depreciation is a sunk cost and so this is not avoidable. Then we have allocated general overheads. These are general overheads. They are common overheads that are allocated on a basis or a predetermined basis. So this is also an unavoidable cost. So now we've identified the avoidable and unavoidable cost. We want to compare and see which one is higher if we make or if we are going to buy the abuguya. So we have direct materials. Here our concentration is only on avoidable cost or relevant cost. So direct materials. In making, we are going to incur direct material cost of 6,000. Direct labor of 4,000, viable overheads of 1,000, and then 1,000 from the supervisor's salary. Like we said, for the second supervisor, his salary is avoidable. So, 1,000 is avoidable here. But depreciation of specialized equipment is not avoidable. And for allocated general overhead, that one too is not avoidable. So, if we decide to make the Aboboya in-house, we care, we incur direct materials expenditure of 6,000 per unit that year. Then we have direct labor. That is 4,000. Then we also have variable overheads. For an amount of 1,000 Ghana cities, if we decide, if the company decides to produce the Abuboya in-house, then there is the second supervisor's salary. It is avoidable because if the company chooses to outsource the Abuboya, it is not going to incur this particular expenditure. So we have 1,000. And then we have, we are told that the specialized equipment can be sold at a price of 4,000. That is, if the company decides to outsource or to acquire the Abuboya from the external supplier, it can get an amount of 4,000 as sales proceeds from selling the specialized equipment. But then, if it continues to manufacture the Abuboya in-house, it is not going to get that particular amount. So the 4,000 Ghana cities is an opportunity cost of making the Abuboya in-house. It is an opportunity cost because if Abuboya company decides to make this um, the Abuboya tricycles in-house, they are not going to get this amount because they will be using the specialized equipment and they are not going to sell it for that particular amount. So an opportunity cost of 4,000. Then we have the purchase cost. We are told the supplier has offered to sell each Abuboya at a price of 18,000. 
So we write the 18,000 here. Then now we find the total relevant cost under each decision. So when we sum up the total relevant cost under make, we are getting 16,000. Then when you sum up for buy, we have 18,000. So what is, it is the, uh, what is the decision to take now? After comparing the relevant cost of making and then buying, you realize that the relevant cost for making is lower than the relevant cost for buying. So the decision is to the decision is to make. So the decision is that Cantanka Limited should continue. Should continue to manufacture the Abuboya tricycles. Try cycles in house sorry the name of the company is Abubuya Limited and not Kankanka so we have Abubuya Limited they should continue to manufacture the Abubuya tricycles in house because when they do so they are going to make cost savings of 2,000 because the difference between making and buying is 2,000 Ghana cities. So they are going to save 2,000 Ghana cities in costs. And mind you, all these costs are avoidable costs. They are relevant costs. They are incremental costs. They are costs that vary with respect to the alternative we make or the choice we make. Then the second question is, what are the qualitative factors the company should consider in arriving at a decision to make or buy? So this first decision, this answers I. The first decision we we have arrived at is based on quantitative factors. Okay, we compare the relevant cost of the two alternatives, and we realize that it is best to manufacture the Abuboya tricycles in house. But then. In making decisions, you also have to take into account qualitative factors, okay? Qualitative factors also have to be taken into account. So after making the quantitative comparisons, now you have to buttress your decision with qualitative factors. And one of them is to consider um, the agency of need. Agency of need. So in make or buy decisions, you consider the urgency of need. For example, if you urgently uh, if you urgently need a particular product and you cannot readily produce it, then it means the best de decision is to outsource it. Okay, so the urgency of need is a factor that should be considered. Then also we have the required expertise. If you are a company. And you don't have the required expertise to manufacture a particular product then the best decision is to get a supplier who has the requisite knowledge skills and expertise to be able to manufacture that particular product another consideration is the available capacity so if you are a company and you decide to manufacture a particular um, item do you have the capacity in terms of storage in terms of human resources to be able to do that manufacturing you ask yourself that question then we also have availability or let's say reliability of supplier so if you decide to outsource if you decide to um, buy the product from an external supplier is the supplier reliable how do you measure reliability so you take that one to into account then you also have design and quality considerations
So if you want to outsource or make a product, are you sure you are able to meet the quality and design specifications? You ask yourself that particular question too before you, you finally arrive at the decision whether to make or to outsource the product. This brings us to the end of the tutorial session on make or buy decision. Once again, kindly subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share for the producer of all colleagues who may need the videos. Thank you very much and stay blessed.